Your beloved child has been kidnapped by a sadistic cult. The hips on the drag queen go swish, swish, swish. The cult convinces her to inject poison in her body and to get her healthy body parts amputated. The world has gone mad. Society celebrates the cult and ridicules parents who fight back. Some parents are willingly handing their children over to the cult and cheering their child's destruction. Why do I care about experienced libido? Once you have one, you'll be like, damn, this is what I've been missing. <laughs> My beloved child is kidnapped by a sadistic cult. I want to talk to the kids. Sometimes we're a boy, sometimes we're a girl. They are grooming children into being transgender identified. Hi, my name is Liana. I use they demon pronouns. If you want breasts at a later point in your life, you can go and get them. Enough is enough. How many more lives they want to do this experiment? How many more? Will yours be next? There's a growing movement designed to confuse children about who they are on a fundamental level. This is the cult of transgenderism. The transgender phenomenon is not a small-scale operation that's not led by a single man. Instead, it's led by the most influential power centers in the country, our own government, big corporations, the medical institutions, and of course, the mass media. The princess who came to your ball tonight was me. <laughs> Trans ideology is as simple as it is fundamentally incoherent. Boys can be girls and girls can be boys. Gender, which is how you feel inside your body. The priests wear white robes and they become rich as they demand bodily sacrifice of their victims through disfigurement, sterilization, and ultimately in some cases, even suicide. Adults are being lured into this, but the primary target is children. Now, in many places, even acknowledging that any of this is happening will get you canceled, kicked off social media. You can be fired from your job. It may even be punishable by law. Criticism of the transgender movement is not allowed. How did we get here? Anyone who's lived in this country as recently as, say, 2015, knows that this phenomenon is entirely new. Prior to a few years ago, trans ideology had very few acolytes. How did it become the reigning religion of our ruling class? So historically, gender dysphoria afflicted 0.01% of the population, so roughly one in 10,000, and they were overwhelmingly male. Uh, the numbers were even smaller when it came to females. I think it was one in 30,000. Today, the newest report is that one in 20 young women in college are identifying as trans. That is an enormous spike. In the UK, where they have centralized medical care and they can see the numbers more easily, they have, there have been reports of a 4,000% spike in the referrals of young biological women to the National Gender Service for hormones, followed by surgical intervention. We're seeing this among teenage boys as well. But the, the really startling spike and the reason that the original researcher, Dr. Lisa Lentman, knew that there was something going on is because gender dysphoria, the severe discomfort in one's biological sex, had always afflicted boys and men, overwhelmingly. There are at least three different kinds of gender dysphoria. There's child onset gender dysphoria. These are the kids who said that they wanted to grow up and become the other sex. By the time they grew up, they had changed their minds. Second, there's autogonophilic males. It only happens in males. So the, these are the guys who at puberty get this strong urge to dress as women and want to be women in some cases that is sexually motivated. It's a turn on for them. They uh, look at themselves in the mirror and they masturbate. However, a subset of autogonophilic males, their fantasies shift from cross-dressing to 
imagining that they actually had female body parts, in particular breasts and genitalia. And this becomes a strong motivating factor, strong enough such that this subset is very likely to go ahead and get those. People are uncomfortable about autogonophilia. They would rather not know. They are more comfortable with the standard narrative. I was always a woman trapped in a man's body. And then the third kind, which is really only existed for about 10 years, rapid onset gender dysphoria. These are youth who, there were no signs in childhood. They are mostly born female, so it's not autogynephilia. And then out of the blue, it seems, they'll tell their parents, hey, I'm trans. These adolescent girls uh, probably don't have real gender dysphoria. They probably have been talked into this belief 